don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's time for our mid-month mini mission inspiration over on our mission inspiration Facebook group today. Um, and I'll put a link on screen right now, but there'll also be a clickable link in the description area below this video. If you want to click the link, go to our Facebook group and join in with the monthly fun that we have in that group. There's now over 4,000 people actively participating in the group each month with the main missions and the mid-month mini. So there's plenty of inspiration to see what other people have done um, and then you can jump in and join in and do your own thing. So this month for March, the mid-month mini mission, the fabulous randomizer machine that Ian built for us has chosen the letter E. There you go. So, and this is the, um, the prompt card for the mid-month mini. As you can see, we've got the five words for inspiration this month are uh, emotion, elves, ah, I can see lots of pointy ears and curly toes on that one. Uh, the word early, earth, which is a nice one, a nice global one, and the word escape, which is <laughs> can be used for so many different things. Um, and is also going to be the word that I'm going to use as well today. I may even squeeze in another E word to go with it, which is going to be the word evade. So using an, another E word, but using the word evade and escape because it's fitting with our current global situation. So this is my tag that I've already prepared. I've already cut out from an old um, box of dog biscuits, um, dog kibble. So I've cut out the shape from my tag journal and I've got a couple of pieces of uh, paper. This is my tag journal that I'm keeping all my mid-month mini missions in this year. So what I want to do is I want to back with this piece of old graphic 45 paper. It's from the old steampunk spell set, which has just been lying around. Uh, it was given to me ages and ages and ages ago by uh, my friend Jane, Jane Cameron. Thanks Jane if you're watching. Still got a few bits and pieces left. Um, so I'm going to cover the back of the journal in this black because I like to cover the backs of my tags. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is just line that up. I'm just going to line it up with the edge so I don't have to cut lots of different sides and I'm just going to trace around it with my pencil and then I'm going to cut it out. It's as easy as that. You don't have to do anything else. So just with a pair of skizzers and I'm not being, you know, I'm not trying to keep exactly, I'm not being exact with this because once it's glued on I'll probably end up having to trim it down a little bit because when you trace round something you always trace round with the thickness of the pencil that you're using so it's always a little bit bigger anyway. I think that should just about do it for the back. So now when I pop those together you can see it's just just that tiny tiny bit bigger which is fine. So all I have to do now is just to glue this back on. That sounds like Mr Ian and Mr Bentley going back from their morning WALK. Has he been a good boy? Yes he has. Thank you. So I'm just going to glue that down. Put plenty of PVA on that. This is some craft glue I bought recently and it's horrible stuff. The um, applicator is far too well. Look, see how massive globs of glue it. It's not a fine point applicator at all. It's just horrible. The PVA is a bit watery, but because I bought it, I'm going to use it. <laughs> I'm not wasting it. But what I'll do is I'll just get a piece of scrap card from that corner and I'll just kind of spread it out a little bit on the paper. Yeah, not nice glue at all this. I know it was really inexpensive but to be honest you know I still don't want to waste it by not using it up because let's face it at this point in time you know with the world grinding to a halt 
we need to use everything that we've got. Okay, so that just fits nicely there. I can always trim it back down again later, it's not an issue. And I can just squeeze the sides, make sure it's all gripping, and then just give that a minute or two to grab and set and then I can get this cleaned up. So once I've got this cleaned up, got that a little bit dry, I'll be right back. Okay, so my glue has pretty much grabbed onto the card now, so I can just go back in with my scissors and just trim off that little bit of excess. Just get it as close to the tag as I can without cutting back into the tag. Now you could use a craft knife to do this really quickly or just really carefully just go down the sides with your cutting implement is. I think it's only a tiny 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 wee bit at that side because I matched up the edge with the paper. There we go. Yeah, a little bit of fraying on the edge there, but sometimes it can be a bit fiddly just to trim off really small pieces. And you see, I've just got a couple of bits. I can just sand those back with an emery board later. That's not a problem. And then we're going to leave the bottom. Leave the bottom as it is. So I've got my bin to one side. All right, before I forget, I'm going to put the hole into it now so that when I put my front cover on, I don't lose it completely. <laughs> Which I've done in the past. Right, so there's the hole. Lovely, so that's the back. So for the front, I'm going to cover it using a piece of Tim Holtzy paper. I'm not really sure what set this is from, possibly wallflower, and I'm just gonna repeat the process again. Do the same thing, I've already traced round from the side. So all I have to do is just to cut that piece of paper out. So you've already seen me do one side and it's not all that interesting watching somebody cut out a piece of the paper. So I'll just jump through and I'll join with you when it's cut out. Okay, so my piece is now cut out. I'm gonna repeat the same process again with the glue. It's not the flowery side I want, it's the actual blue side. So let's just give that a good soaking in some glue. And we'll pretty much do what we did last time, just spread it out. We should actually just be able to push it towards the edges. And then just line it up. This type of glue does go transparent when it's dry so it doesn't matter if you get a little bit on so you just push it so that it grabs onto the edges give it a bit of a rub if you've got a speedball brayer you might want to just run it over a couple of times just to flatten it down I don't have mine to hand so that's fine so you can see I've got a little bit of a trim to do there so we'll just trim that off now If you're interested in what size these tags are, if you want to make your own, there is, um, or there are, some templates and some downloadable covers that I made available on my website, on my shop. If you don't want to go through the trouble of measuring and stuff, but these are four inches by eight inches high. So four inches wide by eight inches high. And all you have to do is decide how, what kind of an angle you want your sides to be at and then just make a mark up two inches and then just decide if you want an inch down and then just follow the same template if you want to or just you can follow mine. So I think I'm happy with that. So all I have to do now is just to pop through again where the hole is, just to make sure that we don't lose it. There we go. So now that I've got my front and my back Done. I want a little bit of a trim in there, I can do that in a minute. I'm ready to start decorating my tag for March. Just pop those scissors away. 
just going to leave it for a minute or two just to dry so that it's not too damp when I start adding on extra bits of colour. Okay, so that's pretty much dry now. So all I want to do is just go around the edges with a little bit of distressing and just kind of get rid of those raw white edges on the edges of the paper and the card just to kind of blend everything together. It's not a step you have to do if you don't want to. It's just one that I like to do. I just think it helps just to finish a page or a project sometimes. Particularly if it's a small piece like a, a, a tag. That's black anyway, so that doesn't really need a border on the back. And it is the reverse. That should do. Just a tidy up. It's a bit of a grungy one anyway. So. Okay, so the next thing, I've got some structure paste. Not something I do very often on tags. So I'm going to pull that structure paste and I have my um, particles stencil. I think if you're interested, there are still a few on the website. I think I'm going to put it about there and then grab some of that structure paste and then I'm going to sweep through. Now I'm not particularly bothered about getting a complete and even coverage with the paste. As long as I get kind of the impression and I'm putting quite a bit. Yeah, big lump, that's a dried bit. Yuck as sometimes happens with these things, these kind of products. Just lightly going over the top with my spatula and just go back just to make sure we're not losing too many holes. Just turn it round because it's gripping a little bit, which is good. Drop some in there and then we can just lightly spread it out just like you're icing a cake. And then when we've got any left, take it towards the edges. I'm not bothered about going right the way up to the edges. I don't want to dig in too far. Losing a bit there, that's fine. in different directions you tend to put it in and then pull it back out again but I don't mind if it's got a little bit it's not totally even don't mind it at all in fact additional texture is actually quite good all right so let's lift that stencil off That'll do. And I'll need to get this in some water straight away and then get all this cleaned up before it dries, wash off the spatula. So I shall do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so that's pretty much dried now. I've just run my finger over the edges just to remove any kind of overhangs that there were with the structure paste. Um, I have managed to get a little bit on the back, but that's to be expected. That just adds a little bit more extra grunge and dirt to it. So I'm now going to bring in some of my distress inks. So I want cracked pistachio to start off with. So I'm going to very gently just ink up and just bring some of that green. through 
through and onto the texture paste. Now the texture paste with it being very porous is going to soak that ink into the structure paste. And the more you ink it, the more it's going to take in. So add some nice green, which complements that blue a little bit. I'll put that there, and then I'm going to need a brand new one for the next colour. Which I'm going to bring in some carved pumpkin, which is a really bright orange. So I'm then going to, there you go, you see. I'm just going really, really gently on the surface. Doesn't matter if we mix a little bit. And then you can jump back in and blend back with your green. Just to soften the transitions a little bit. If so desired. And then the next colour I'm going to bring in. It's going to be the seedless preserves. A little touch of purple. And then we'll just start adding that in. Down that central piece. out into the paper. And then just whiz that around, just blend in. So we've got some real kind of um, I would say kind of almost um, Halloween-y kind of themed colours, but just, they just work together these colours, I don't know why. Orange, green and purple, always, because I think we're so used to seeing them at like times like Halloween. See, so just putting a little bit of that green into that orange one there. Darken that up a little bit. So we've got one that's got maybe all three colours on. Which is kind of cute. I like that idea. Of having all three. Blend and blend until you're kind of happy with how your colours are working. the colours. So put those inks away. Put my 
blending foams back in that little drawer. And now I'm going to take the water and I'm just going to just spritz a little bit just to give them a little bit of a motley effect. Now can you see how it's kind of started to break up those colours that have been sitting on the surface just to give them a bit more extra texture and I'm going to leave that to sit and dry for about 10 minutes or so before I carry on with the next step. So you can see now, let's just hope that stays in focus, <laughs> All those kind of like little blobs that were sitting on the surface, they've kind of broken everything up now. So it does look a little bit like it's either otherworldly, planetary, galaxy kind of colours that were that swirly colour, but also kind of look cellular like viruses, which is just kind of what I was hoping to go for today. So I just want to add a little bit more detail in this. I've got some black gesso. I'm not going to use a huge amount, I'm just going to dip in, add some water, just enough to get some paint moving, and then I'm going to add some overlay black splatters, like so. just to get that particle kind of look even more so. Move those scissors out of the way. So get that dried off. So we've got the mottly background of the blue paper. We've got the grunge from the edges. We've got the texture paste. We've got the colors. We've got the water on the colors, which is giving them that kind of mottly, bobbly kind of effect. And then we've got the circular kind of motif with the splatters in the black, giving that kind of overlay pattern again. So another kind of layer with that. Once this is dry, I'll be ready to add um, my, my quote for the page. So I'll get all this cleaned up, get all that wiped down. And then when this is dry, I'll be right back. Okay, so now you can see the splatters in isolation. When I mean that, there's none on the background to kind of distract you on the worktop. So you can see how they've kind of added that extra floating layer over the top. So happy with that. So I'm just gonna bring out the vintage photo again. And then I'm just going to go over the edge or around the edge. So where we have that color previously on the edge. Just going to reinforce that, that kind of grungy border on the sides now. Just darken the edges up again, just to create that frame. So when we added the greens and the oranges and that kind of thing, it kind of lost it from the side. So I just want to add that back in once more. will do it nicely, I think. I do like the colour of that. Get rid of those bits. Okay, so that pretty much is for the tag there. I just want to bring in my quote, my phrase now. I did say at the beginning that I'm probably going to use the word escape and evade. So I've printed off on my computer um, the phrase escape from reality. And then I've added just at the bottom evade the world because I think at this stage we all would, wouldn't mind <laughs> if it were possible to retreat from the world until all this madness is over it would be fantastic but most of us don't have the wherewithal or the resources to be able to do that you know if you live in a farm and you're completely self-sufficient then that's wonderful but if you live in a 
cities where you don't grow your own you're pretty much reliant on the rest of society to bring the food to you so that's added a little bit of grunge around the edges of those so I'm just going to bring in my glue so I've got a little bit of my Tombow PVA left just a tiny tiny bit I think I'm hoping there's just enough for this project so add a little bit on the back there a little bit on the back of that Let's flip that over and then I'm going to put that one about there so it stretches across those two and then this one I'm going to bring that keep it on the right hand side of the page and then bring that one down to about here Okay, so the final touch, or one of the final touches, I wanted to put a hole reinforcer up here. Now, I've just punched a circle using a three quarter inch circle punch and my cropper dial just to create that hole reinforcer. So I'll just quickly whip around the edges of that. Which I'm probably wasting my time. Maybe a little bit, maybe not. If it goes over the edge of the tag I'm going to trim it which is why I'm just thinking I might have just wasted my time doing that but we'll see and I'll just put some glue just around that whole reinforcer there okay, come on. and then hopefully that will just fit over the top yeah that three-quarter works just nicely I'll just center that up using a pencil Perfect. So that brings the back to the front, or the front to the back, and then we can flip that over. And I'm just going to grab an emery board. Oh, I keep knocking my table. I'm just going to sand that a little bit because some of the glue has gone through. That's it. And then what I've done is I've just punched out another piece from an old Tim Holtzy paper using the same punch and the cropper dial and I'll just whip round there only because I could have used blue um, but I kind of like the red just because and because it's on the back it doesn't really matter it's not going to clash with anything else it is when all said and done just a hole reinforcer so I can drop that one over the top like so I just put that through just to make sure that it's centered there we go and I think I'm happy with that one for March. So that's it. That's my mid-month mini mission inspiration tag for my tag journal for the month of March using the word escape and the letter E which is what the randomizer machine chose for us this month. So I hope you enjoyed me I hope you enjoyed watching me cough teeth in. Obviously the coffee's wearing off. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed watching me create that. If you did, please remember to give the video a thumbs up. And if you're so inclined, share it with your friends. But if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can also do that by clicking the button at the end of the video. And don't forget, if you want to join us over on our Mission Inspiration Facebook group for the two monthly challenges, the main one, which is the first Saturday of every month, and the mid-month mini, which is the third Saturday of every month. Fortnight after. 
then you can follow that link on screen right now or click that clickable link in the description area below this video. That's all from me for today. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.